Welcome to Dear Romance Writer, where three writers who always deliver happily ever afters offer questionable advice for all of your relationship, work, and life problems. I'm Zio Axelrod. I'm Rowan Parrish. And I'm Avery Flynn, and I'm super excited because we're going to have a great show for you today in no small part because we have the love gods with us. Love gods. Uh, audio narrators and podcasters extraordinaire, Tim Page and Liam DeCosimo. Thank you so much for being here. Please tell us a little bit about yourselves and the love gods. Oh, yeah, that's he's going to just defer right to me. Hi, I'm Tim Page. <laughs> <laughs> Every good partnership uh, needs the extrovert and the introvert. Uh, we're both extroverts we're both loud obnoxious ridiculous human beings and <laughs> it's just it's a horrible combination for anybody that's around us um but yeah so i'm an audiobook narrator i have almost 300 titles out now which is fucking wow. crazy i haven't been doing it that long i think i've listened to all 300 of them probably <laughs> <laughs> you've done You're several all, of like, mine yay Big yeah house. like I, gra I grab a book i'm like oh it's tim oh yeah it's tim, tim. <laughs> yeah that's that's kind of how it is it's just kind of like well if i want to listen to a book oh god i gotta deal with tim again <laughs> um, but Liam and I co-host a show together called The Love Gods, where we answer listener submitted questions about love, sex, and romance. And about 40% of them are like, what does it feel like when your penis is inside of a vagina? And then the rest of them are like deep relationship questions that people <laughs> entrust to complete fucking idiots with their uh, relationships. So yeah, I, I now want to know what that feels like. Thank you. Please answer this version <laughs> is <laughs> yeah, you can't just drop that Wonderful. in there. Wonderful. Well, it, All it right. Feels there like, you go. It feels like a waterfall falling off of a skyscraper into a cloud of pillows. All right. Wow. That's a lot of words. He he says <laughs> he says vagina, but everybody else always wants to know, like, what does anal feel like? And I was like, they just assume that Tim and I just fuck each other constantly. And that's yeah. why we would know, because that's how okay. we do these books. It's just but, we act it out. In fairness, <laughs> in fairness, what does your family refer to me as? Okay, and this is no joke. Uh, they call Tim my other wife, and they have well before I was married. So Tim has been my other wife for the better part of twenty years now. Like we're both yeah. we're both allies. We just happen to be straight, and we love each other. So yes, that's kind of yeah. where we're at. Yeah, oh, I like that. Liam. What about you? Who are you? Yeah, Liam. Tell us about you. I'm obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, so I'm Liam DeCosimo. I am also a romance audiobook narrator. Uh, I have done some other titles as well, but let's call it what it is at this point. I'm a I'm a romance audiobook narrator. Uh, I actually got into the business in 2020, actually late 2019. Tim was like, "Hey, you should do this. I'm doing it, and it's a lot of fun." And me being the little tag along that I am, even though I'm older than Tim by like 40 plus years, so it's weird. Um, <laughs> I, I, I got into audiobooks, started recording in March of 2020. So I'm, as of this month, I am two years uh, in the, in the cuts. So uh, nice. I absolutely love it. Unfortunately for me, I'm only a part-time narrator. I still have to hold down a full-time job, but as you can see by the extravagant booth that I re <laughs> recently acquired, uh, my goal <laughs> is by the end of the year to be a full-time uh, audiobook narrator. So those that are listening, if you'd like to send work my way, you can help facilitate this change. <laughs> and you can hear the dulcet tones of my melodious male male romance as typically I don't get to use this voice because Tim is the low voice. And I'm usually up here where I normally speak because let's be honest, I'm the prettier of the two of us. I'm, pretty. I'm prettier than this man. No, he, he's definitely prettier. So <laughs> until you guys have known each other for 20 years. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. Mm -hmm. At least, yes. at least in another life, like, you know, what, is, what was that movie where it was, you know, multiple, multiple timelines and lives where they've known each other over and over, oh, reading Apollo like that. something. Was, you know, what, Atlas there, is there really Atlas, are yeah. those people yeah, that Atlas. you meet, though, that you just yeah. sort of fall in with, yeah. like, immediately. And, yeah. and it feels like it's always so weird so. how that works. It's, and there's some people 20, that you fall like out with immediately where you're like, oh, fuck no. Right? Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> well, maybe got, you know for good reason. Yeah, you've got people that kind of come and go in your life. And, you know, sometimes it's a blip on the radar. But for Tim has been that consummate thorn in my side for for 20 years. So yeah, oh, you poor, nice. poor, poor man. You. No, no, he's, he's, <laughs> I, I say he's my better half because he really is. He does, he does bring out the best in me and he's been there to, to keep me on track and, and focused. And he's been my shoulder to cry on and 
my punching bag when needed. I mean, usually he holds up the mitts and I'll punch the mitts, but he's yeah. been you don't you don't cry. <laughs> you don't have emotions. You're you're a you're a cyborg. Oh. I don't. Yeah, ew, I'm, emotions. I'm an ew, android. Emotions. <laughs> I'm, Avery does not like emotions. No, yeah, I'm, no. I'm C three PO. I'm C three PO in every sense of the word. Like just the British uptight, emotionless, golden robot. Yeah. <laughs> so it applies. There are so many places to go with that, but I'm going to transition us into sort of how our week has been going, um, and I'm just going to start us off with that. Okay. Um, who else is walking around their house this week singing i'm just thinking with my dick is it just me have you guys yes, is my so. is my tiktok completely different than everyone else's it is it stuck like in it. my head <laughs> sounds like you not know what that is <laughs> you have to explain yes. okay i'm gonna send this to you so it is it so is can a share your misery of this yeah of of this uh you know, guy who's probably my age. So we'll go with, he's in his late forties, early fifties. And, um, he's at Mardi Gras and he's watching the floats go by and it's this rap song. And it's, uh, the, the line is, you know, she's super thick and I'm just thinking with my dick and my dick is dumb. And he's like, got the beat. He's mouthing the words. He's got like the whole thing. There's like this lady who looks, you know, slightly older in the background clapping along with them. I mean they're having a great fucking time and that has been stuck in my head all week so now I'm going to be texting that to all of you so oh, great. anybody yeah. else just, does anybody else like randomly turn songs into inappropriate ones or is that just me oh yeah like, oh no God. no all the time okay yeah. and right. then also sing them to your animals or do no, you cat sure. people not do that do you cat no, people sing I to your sing, them, sing them to my children and so they're <laughs> going to be emotionally scarred for life because okay I'll just that be, works. I'll be doing dishes and let's be fair. It doesn't happen often, uh, but I'll be doing <laughs> dishes and I'll just be like up in your butt and oh. my kid will repeat it because I'm a terrible yes. father. Wow. Not wrong. Your teachers love you. Yeah, <laughs> no. Oh, and his teacher is his mom because we homeschool right now. So uh, my, my she son is, problem. no, my son is seven. So this is year two of, of homeschool. So when he complains like, oh, my teacher is such a bitch. I'm like, what's well, your mom? Can't really say that. So <laughs> yes. let's, uh, let's, let's rein it in a little bit. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's, it, it makes for interesting times at home. I'll be really yeah. excited when he does go to public school and just, I get hauled into the office constantly. So mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> where did he learn this? Where did he pick yeah. this up? Where did he you pick know, as soon up? as I walk in, they're going to be like, this asshole again okay. yeah okay we got Explains it they're gonna give you a bedroom you're gonna have your own room there just just to make it easier so you <laughs> don't much. have to leave all the time pretty much i'll record from there this booth is is modular it's fine it's perfect <laughs> so what, how about you guys what have you been up to this week this. Well, not to make you super no. jealous avery but zio and i actually got to hang out we hung we out person the other day <laughs> what? So, i hate I you both yeah. no it was very fun we lunched. I don't hear about it. We, we talked. <laughs> you guys had food. Rome, did, did food. you make food? You know, I actually didn't. I um, okay. I that makes it make, slightly better. I know. I went to go make Zio cookies and found the shock of my life. I was out of sugar. Like as, <laughs> as a baker, I'm mortified to say that I I was just like had zero sugar in the house, so I, I made nothing and we ordered food, and it was. What'd nice. you order? We yeah. ordered like a Middle Eastern mm -hmm. yeah. falafel and chicken and Ooh, falafel. Yeah. Chef's oh, kiss. Girl, oh. You're gonna be so proud of me. So yes. incredibly proud of me. Okay. I made pineapple upside down cake from scratch, not <gasps> from the box. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah, and it was gone in like a day and a half. Everybody no left. No hospitalizations. And Nobody died. I didn't no cut myself. I didn't cut myself. I was not harmed in the making of the pineapple upside down cake. Avery, I have a theory that maybe you would be good at all upside down cooking because it's the opposite of regular cooking. I think that might be true. <laughs> Okay. But I did, I thought to myself That's as I was amazing. flipping the stupid thing going, Rose's going to be so proud of me. <laughs> Very proud of you. Uh, I recently did a book where the female protagonist is terrible at baking and constantly sets off the smoke alarm in her apartment. 
Mm -hmm. uh, that she shares with her firefighter love interest that constantly gets called to the condo. Oh, oh that's super <laughs> cute. Oh, that's yeah, cute. It's, it's a book by Nikki Ash. It'll, it'll be out relatively soon. And I, I play both roles. I'm the male and the female for wow. the book. And I was dying. <laughs> Cause that's, that's, <laughs> cause that's funny. Cause that's I'm going to put that on my list. I, I can, I can cook, but I cannot bake. Like I fucked up like two step uh, donut holes. <laughs> like it's yeah, just it's, it's awful it's awful but like okay. any any like regular food i'm good but desserts i will uh somehow i'm just the worst I'm the worst I think and baking legitimately are different like some people mm -hmm. are good at one some people the other yeah. some both but i think it's i don't think they're transferable i think it's no. understandable it's, it's a skill set that i severely lack <laughs> <laughs> So I just go and buy donuts. I just go and buy them because there's a donut shop in every corner in Fresno and they're all good. They're all yeah. fucking good. So donuts. Yeah. Oh. I'm, so I'm gonna have a right. more moment. Oh mm, Dunkin' donuts. Donut. Dunkin' Donuts is wicked awesome. Mm. Wicked awesome. <laughs> go get some Dunkin' Donuts, get some baked beans, go park my car in Harvard Yard. It's wonderful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Dio, what what was your week? I'm just gonna drop accents and like yeah. in the middle of a conversation, I'm just gonna go Scotland. Yeah. Let's go. Let's we do. Uh, just like bus went out. That would be awesome. He's gonna go. Mm, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so so my, my he's actually really good at it. Yeah, my my limitations. Although I got hauled up, Tim and I did a, a live session on Facebook, and somebody said that Tim's Irish accent was better than mine. <laughs> I was floored. I fucking taught it's him his not. Irish accent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's not. It's like what? It's really... No. So yeah. Tim, no, how much did you have to pay that person? Tell the truth. Uh, it, it was all the money in my bank account. He was very happy with 50 cents. <laughs> Goose egg. Yeah, no, it's fun. No, I, I have a, I have a decent amount of, uh, accents that I'm good at when it's like dialogue, but I, I probably wouldn't want to do like an entire, uh, book in that accent, but Irish is one of my mainstays. I grew up in a very Irish household, um, in, in Syracuse where like my, family speaks with weird accents and my grandfather was like off the boat spoke gaelic like yeah my irish is very it runs very deep in this family <laughs> gotcha. <There you> go. <laughs> i love <cool>. it <laughs> oh well, for me we, yeah I mean, yeah i mean other than seeing i mean there that was the highlight seeing ron so like after that you know Aww. everything else is a blur <laughs> and everything brunch like oh brunch just for, yeah just getting my my office is finally I finally got my standing desk which I'm sitting at right now. Ooh, nice. My nice. office is done. I'm so happy. Oh, so cute. Happy yeah. He has a window seat. I was yeah. so jealous. And a resting yeah. couch. A resting. Yes, my my fainting couch is couch is ah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'm a little Very Victorian that. of you. Very yeah, nice. as well. I have velvet well, light switch colors to cover bond so bond. yes. <laughs> I love it. Black velvet light switch and and outlet covers. So. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Very Victorian. <laughs> I thought All about right, putting. Tim, uh, tell us at least one exciting thing that you had with your week this week. Oh God, I don't do anything. I live in this booth. Uh, <laughs> so, no, I'll tell you what I did. I completed the booking for a Disney World vacation for me and my little family. So. Oh, oh Disney! Yay! That's awesome. what I did. That's nice. Are you staying at the park? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna stay on property. We they You're took away a lot of the good thing. stuff about it. Yeah, oh, we really? we used to go like every year or twice a year before you know everything happened. But um, now you know this is our first time since everything started, and we're gonna stay on property. And then we have to figure out if it if it was worth it this time around because we always mm -hmm. do, and it's always great. But now they've taken away a bunch of this stuff, and they made a bunch of changes. Not the same as it used to be, but that's okay. I'm um, hmm. I just can't wait. I can't wait. Cost more vacations too. are good. The yeah. vacation, yeah. you know. Yes. God, I yes. miss After I miss travel complete. and vacations yeah. and yeah, going places. All that <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. yeah. So should we get to our letter? Yeah, let's get to the letter. Right. And it's from a listener. Yay! Yay! Thank you so much for sending that in. Um, and you know, you guys can reach us at dearromancewriter.com. You can fill out the anonymous form there. You can DM us, you can send a carrier pigeon, however you want to get in touch with us. We would love to hear from you and love to help you with some questionable advice, which is not always questionable, but most of the time. <laughs> so <laughs> this is, let's see, it says, my boyfriend, 24 male, and I, 22 female, have been together for almost seven years. 
I love him very much, but the last year or so has made me question the longevity of our relationship. He has struggled with anxiety and depression for as long as I've known him, but he kept it hidden from me until the last few years because he feels a lot of shame in his struggle with anxiety and depression. Hmm. I've struggled with anxiety and depression over the past few years, but it is much less severe. I try to be as supportive as I can without it being a detriment to my own mental health. While he has made some strides to better manage his mental health, I feel, I feel like if nothing greatly changes, we won't be able to move on from this point in our lives. By that, I mean buy a house, adopt a pet together, have children, etc. We've had many conversations about his mental health and how it affects our relationship, and he's in the process of trying to see a therapist, but I'm terrified none of it will be enough and I'll be stuck in an unhappy relationship. He often cites other things as a drain on him and his mental health, like school when we were in college, or right now it's an awful job he's in. I've tried laying out the absolute bare minimum of what I need from him emotionally, and just as someone that I share a home with, and he still struggles to meet that sometimes. Do you have any advice as to how to navigate a relationship where one person suffers such severe anxiety and depression? When he's having good days and things are great, I'm so excited for the future but a string of bad days makes me question whether or not our relationship will last. I want to be a good and supportive partner, but I also know what I deserve from a partner. I don't expect him to wake up one day and never struggle with mental health ever again. I just want to feel like I can trust that he can handle some more responsibility. Love your podcast so much and all your books. Signed, tired of being an emotional buoy. Mm. (laughs) I I will, I can chime in if that's. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. go, Uh, yes. So, person who wrote the letter I can relate in a lot of ways so the woman I married has oh boy my light is going to go crazy now the ghost is in my booth messing with my light (laughs) um the the woman I married who we are not together anymore but we still live in the same house and are best friends and raise children together so we have a very strange dynamic but it works and but anyway um she has mental illness I won't go into it because that's kind of her story to tell but Mm -hmm. she has serious mental illness that requires therapy and medication and um I can tell you as someone we found that really late in our relationship she didn't know uh that she had this mental illness until we were together we'd already been married we already had kids she went and got diagnosed and it kind of made a lot of sense and so I can I can tell you first off that I totally understand where you're coming from that it is really challenging being the partner uh, of somebody who struggles with those things. And um, as someone who, you know, really, I, I don't, I don't really experience a lot of I, I experience no depression and just kind of general anxiety, but definitely not in the sense that it sounds like you're describing. So as someone who hasn't had those experiences personally, it's really challenging because we can't ever really truly empathize we can sympathize but it's really hard to empathize mm-hmm. with what those experiences are like and how it impacts their their daily lives and it is it's hard for us as well no doubt about it so I, I guess the first thing I wanted to say in chiming in is that like just know you're not alone there's a lot of us that have had those experiences on the other side I'll say that um that is those those things are a part of that person maybe they've manifested more as time has gone on and life has gotten harder i mean you guys are really young so you know life is starting to get to the point where like there's a lot of bigger challenges and bigger weights on your shoulders and so that is certainly going to bring those things up to the forefront some more and so of course that's going to make it feel a little bit heavier um but i would say those are those things are a part of your partner there are things that yes you will probably have to deal with if you end up together forever they're probably not going away Mm -hmm. and so it is something to understand like this is a long-term potentially forever thing and I do think it's going to be important for you to imagine that this problem although it may be something that there are more tools to to work with for your partner and you know maybe it's medication maybe it's tools gained from a therapist maybe it's whatever um you know, although it might get easier, it's it's probably always going to be there. And I think you need to consider, are you going to be able to to handle that, to be that support? Because sometimes you are going to have to pick up the slack um, emotionally and, uh, you know, not just emotionally. See, my ghost lights are flickering like crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that it will be important for you to, to examine that and determine if that, that's going to be all right for you. And I think if it's not, I, I think you should maybe also cut yourself some slack and know that not everybody 
has that capacity to be able to do that. And it doesn't make you a good or a bad person to do it or not, but it it is, it's going to be a challenge and your partner deserves somebody who is going to put forth that effort and is going to be able to do the emotional work themselves to be able to support them. And you also deserve to have a partner who is me, who, who can meet your needs and, um, you know, that, that you feel is a, a good match for you. So that's kind of my perspective on that. Mm-hmm. As you, I, yeah, I'm just going to say, I'm going to mute myself really quick. because My kid's getting home. So the dogs just went insane. So y'all keep talking. <laughs> No, I was going to say, uh, you could tell who gives the quality advice on our show <laughs> is, is this one. Um, me, I just make dick and fart jokes for the, for the most part. And it's not really applicable in this particular situation. Uh, but I, I, I will to, echo. I would right. love it if you could find a fart joke that was relevant, though. And- <laughs> <laughs> give, yeah. give, give me like a minute. I bet you I will. <laughs> but, so, so, but, but I think that's, that, that's kind of the trick of it, right? Like you're still young, you know, I think she said she was like 22. This guy's 24. Yeah. You've been together yeah. for seven years. Like that's a long ass time. And you were together when you were kids, you know, yeah. like you, you, I think sometimes it's, it's, we recognize the, sh- you know, not shortcomings, but we, we recognize the challenges in a particular relationship. And we just sort of accept it as part of our truth. Cause we're like, Hey, I've lived this for so long. This is what's comfortable. Even when it's uncomfortable, it's still comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, kind of like a fart, like sometimes a fart's uncomfortable until you let it out. And then all of a sudden it. it's more comfortable. Boo. Yeah. Got one. It. Uh, <laughs> now I got to figure out how to insert butter in the ass somehow this that, and then this is a <laughs> full circle this is like a regular love gods episode uh, yeah. but yeah I, I think it's i think you're putting maybe too much pressure on yourself maybe a little bit too much pressure on him as well because like you're still young so have time to kind of figure these things out and sometimes that idea of like distance makes the heart grow fonder maybe that'll help like maybe taking a little bit of break not not in terms of like we're broken up we're gonna go start seeing other people but like kind of like a mental check where it's like, Hey, let me figure out who I am without this Mm -hmm. person. Let them figure out who they are without me, because maybe we're not always going to be there. We can't always be that crutch or, I mean, they, they use the term buoy, right? Someplace for them to always go back to, because, Hey, this is my touchstone. This is my touch base to, to, to reconnect, to keep, to figure out who I am, but you can't define yourself in who you are based on somebody else. Like you need to figure out you let them figure out them and then who you both are together. Um, well, and that's just to jump in really quick. That's also a, an important part of somebody who's going through mental health challenges is to have that team because it isn't just yeah. one person. We're not just going to have like one person can't always be there. So for sure, you know, he should be looking into therapy as as you said, he is. He should, you know, find the right therapist for him. He should find other folks that can be supportive, whether it's yeah. family or friends. A support or system, not just like you said, one person. Yeah. Where you can get that if you go to betterhelp.com. <laughs> oh, so, but well, yeah, I, th- I it, think there's. Well, the other thing though is, you know, she doesn't say in the letter if like exactly what type of help he's seeking. For sure. And yeah. I, I think. Other than the therapist, you think. Right. Other than the yeah. therapist. So, um, and, and it's kind of, conf- you know, clear me up on this, but does she say how long he's been seeing the therapist? Or He said he's in the process of trying to see a therapist. Okay. Maybe looking for one. Which is difficult. Our country is shit for, you know, finding quality mental health care that is um, affordable, especially Mm -hmm. if you're, you know, in your early 20s and you probably don't have, you know, great insurance Insurance. job yet. Mm -hmm. Well, that or you Um, don't know what to look for. You yeah. know what I mean? Like if you have no experience in that realm and you don't have other people that you can kind of lean on, like, hey, do you have a therapist? You know, right. what should it's I be really looking difficult. for? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's really difficult. Yeah. So my big concern on this is just simply because they have been together for so long and they are so young. And I know that sounds so incredibly patronizing and I apologize, but I'm an old lady. So you are <laughs> babies to me. So it's really difficult for uh, me not to be patronizing. I've got shoes older than you. Yeah. Um, but what I will say though, is I think, especially when it's a first love situation and it's somebody that you started off with very young a lot of times one one member in that relationship will try and take on the big time caregiver role mm-hmm. or the or you know the 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 big support basically everybody wants that person people some people are great at that 
And sometimes it's very easy to fall into that sort of, somebody was talking earlier about that comfort zone, that comfort zone of saying, well, my job in this relationship is to be the support system. Mm -hmm. And you can support someone that you love, but, but if you are the only support, that's mm -hmm. when it gets a little concerning for me. This is what, if, if, if I was talking to my kid <laughs> about this, this would be what I would be concerned about in that. Um, from the perspective, not only of, you know, you need to take care of yourself as well as, you know, be able to be a support to somebody else, but also you may not be trained for that. And if right. he is mm -hmm. only looking to her as being his only um, support and maybe looking for the therapist is something he's kind of doing, but not really. And I understand how hard and scary that is. That becomes a difficulty and that can happen. I mean, in situations and it's not just with mental health, it can be a, you're in a relationship and one person's like, well, I'm just holding out for that perfect job. Or, you know, it can be somebody that's like, you know, just you become, and that becomes sort of your way of your relationship as you become the person taking care of everything. And that to me, as I'm reading this and she's like, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to buy a house or to have kids or to get a dog or whatever it is. She's already feeling that is what I'm getting from this letter. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I would say if there's any way, okay, type A Virgo coming out, if there's any way to put together a plan, <laughs> possibly a checklist, you know, of of options because it can be really overwhelming to try and and search out and find healthcare situations and things like that so to be able to have a list saying here are my options within the location where we're at here are people that i've tried to reach out to here's who's covered by my insurance here's who you know sort of break it down into pieces and parts that may make it seem less overwhelming it Hit may not help but it could possibly help yeah. so yeah no, I like you that. Know, Rome, what are you guys thinking? Yeah, I think um, this is such a, uh, it's a poignant letter for me because I both suffer from anxiety and depression and have dated people who suffer from anxiety and depression. And one of the things that I think is so hard is that if he's just, if, you're, if your boyfriend, letter writer, is just at the beginning of his journey to kind of like understand these, the symptoms that he's having and, and the ways that they affect him, while he's like it's really hard if you've been only in high school and college and maybe mm -hmm. the beginning of a job your whole life is structured for you by external forces your parents and school and when you have to be at work and for me I mean I've had depression since I was like 11 I, I re remember being a kid and waking up and being like something is wrong with me clearly um but I didn't know what it was and I didn't have any language to describe it. And I, it, it wasn't a huge problem for me externally because internally everything was regulated by other people. So like, it didn't matter if I was too depressed to get out of bed. Cause when my alarm went off, if I wasn't downstairs in time to go to school, I had a parent who would come up and be like, get out of bed and go to school. <laughs> right. So I think that one of the reasons, you know, it could be that your, your boyfriend has, like you said, suffered the stigma that, that mental health has in our culture, it could also be that he legitimately didn't understand what was going on for him because there, there is so little information given to teenagers, especially um, mm -hmm. unless you are cutting yourself, overdosing on drugs, like really explicit external right. things that are visible yeah. symptoms to other people. And so it could, be, I do think like some patience would be good because he may be very much at the beginning of understanding what depression and anxiety mean for him. Because even though he's an adult, he had all these years of like not having right. the literacy of, of speaking about this. So I think one thing is definitely give him some time to see a therapist, to try medication, if that's something that he's open to, because it could be that you are uh, that like the way he is now and your concerns about how he would be able to participate in your life the way he is now are not accurate to the way he's going to be in a year or two years once he has a regular therapist and is properly medicated if he's open to that um, because those things really do alleviate a lot of the the symptoms that might be what you're concerned about like not being able to show up on time do things mm -hmm. participate emotionally uh, take care of children like those are all symptoms that unregulated are very hard to manage but when regulated like he could 
not be symptomatic in those ways. So if you have the patience, I would recommend like letting him have some time to figure that out. And whether that means taking a break or uh, just being like, okay, your job for the next year is to, is to like take care of yourself and your mental health. And I am going to give you that time because I love you and I care about you. But I really like at the end of a year or whatever time feels good for you, I would like to check back in and see if like this checklist that Avery suggested, like if these, these things that I need from you that you weren't really able to, to give me before, if you are able to now. And also a thing that I feel like doesn't get discussed nearly enough is that when you have been depressed for your whole life or anxious for your whole life, and then, and, and you go on medication, it changes a lot in your brain and you are not the same person as you were before. And I don't mean like it medicate medication changes your whole personality, but like there were things that I didn't go on medication until I was in my mid thirties. And in um, two months I was like, Oh my God, I'm a different person. And if I had gone on medication when I was 12, my life would have been completely different. Mm -hmm. And I think that to me is like, I I in no way want to say like your partner might not want a life with you after being on medication. That's not what I'm saying, but I am saying that you have to understand that when he gets treated for depression and anxiety, it's not just that his symptoms might lessen. It's also that you will see who he is as a person and the choices he makes when he is not shackled by symptoms of depression and anxiety. And what that could look like is a different person than the one that you're used to in terms of like, uh, some people don't do things because their anxiety makes them feel scared, right? And this person could, when his anxiety is treated, suddenly turn out to be like a daredevil who loves Mm -hmm. to swim with sharks. And previously you were like, thank God, we both are stay at home people who hate sharks or, you know, whatever, fill in your, the blank of your thing. So I think like, give your partner time to feel into his diagnosis and and therapy and also understand that those medications don't just target depression and like not touch anything else and it could be that after a year your relationship will look different even in ways that you're not expecting and I think that's really important to say because you may still be compatible you may go on medication too and maybe you'll both still be compatible but it could also be that both of you in managing your mental health issues uh, become different people than you were expecting and those people may or may not still be compatible in a relationship Mm -hmm. but even if you're not even if you end up not compatible that's not a bad thing because both of you individually getting the help that you need and figuring out who you are when you don't have to manage mental illness illness is more important especially given how young you are I think it's more important than staying together and that's so sad and so hard to hear I know but I, I do think like give him time, but leave your heart open that in a year when you check back in, even if now he's like ticking every box, that doesn't mean that your relationship might just continue apace. Right. Uh, right. There could be other changes as well. Yeah. Really interesting perspective. Yeah, definitely. And I think the other thing too, you, you hit on it a little bit is that um, the medication isn't like he's going to, if let's say he goes on medication, it's not like he's going to take medication and it's just no more depression, everything. Magic wand. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and and the first medication might not work, right? It's it's an experimentation process, especially with you know, medication for mental health challenges. It's such a trial and error thing. And so it's gonna be a journey that, you know, I that word gets overused, but it's true. It's gonna be a journey for trying to figure out what works for him. And it might even be like I think depression and anxiety often get used as like this catch-all. Like I'm mm-hmm struggling with mental health challenges, whatever they are, it's depression and anxiety, but it could be a lot of things. There's a Mm -hmm. lot of things that could end up being something that maybe he's diagnosed with. And that can, you know, knowing that, or at least having a hunch through working with a therapist can help him figure out how to manage that, how to deal with it, what to do during this kind of circumstance, what to do during that kind of circumstance. And Mm -hmm. yeah, I think those things could, they could, like you were saying, exactly what you were saying, it could lead to a better relationship or it could lead to you guys figuring out it's not right for you. Um, I would just say though, don't, and I don't think you're trying to do this and I don't, nobody here would suggest it. Don't just give up right now, you know, Mm -hmm. see, see where this goes, right? Be, you know, be willing to at least you've been together for a long time. And it seems like this is really the, the main issue is that 
you know, the, the times when he's struggling, you're not quite sure what to do, or it's really hard on you, or you're not able to get the things that you need from him, you know, working together with him, taking that time could lead to some really, really amazing things and bringing your relationship to that next step, or it might not, or it might jump into your light and make you vanish. <laughs> or maybe he's just, like right now, maybe he's super into like missionary sex. And then after he takes the medications, he wants to use butter as a lube. Damn, two for two. See, there you go. You made it work. <laughs> I mean, a little and bit so of a shoehorn. Yeah, he, he, made it, he made it work yeah. if he's used the butter. Just depends yeah. on which hole. Although I, I would not recommend that. Um, <laughs> no. Oh, God, no. no. The CDC says no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. This episode brought, brought to you by Country Croc. Well, um, two things. They are very young. And the fact that they've been together for seven years means she was 15 when they yeah. started dating. They don't really, especially um, letter writer, you don't really know who you are at 15. And I know that sounds really condescending, but there's so much growth between 15 and 22, between 22 and 29. There's so much growth. So I would love for you guys to have a chat, not only about his challenges, but just about who you are as people and what you want out of life because it sounds like you have this plan you want kid you know you want a, a house and, and a pet and then kids uh -huh. and he may not be thinking that just yet because he's dealing with things um so I would love for you like Rowan always says to sit down and have a chat you know get yes. some takeout and just chat and just and also it will give you an idea of how serious he is he is about this journey that he needs to take on the road to wellness or better management the other thing is you said that this is the last year or so has made you question it. And for the last two years, we've all been living in a pandemic yeah. <laughs> you know? and like there's a war and there's yeah. like all kinds of stuff going on. So give yourself. And they some... just had the huge life change of getting out of college and just got a college yeah. like a, and probably had to do a lot of that last year or so at home. Yeah. So this isn't normal. None of, we aren't living in normal times. So give yourselves mm -hmm. a bit of grace um, there. But I agree with everything that everybody said other than that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is not the best sample size of life. Like this is not normal. Like don't, <laughs> no, don't, no. Don't confuse this as being like, this is the new normal. Like, I mean, just think just, you weren't even oh God, legally allowed to even drink. Don't let those words we out of your mouth. <laughs> oh yeah. God, right. You can even buy a legal drink, let a writer when we went into lockdown. So like, you know, give yourself. <laughs> so yeah. I can't even use co alcohol to compensate. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, and one other thing I'll say too, is that, um, like, this is something that's not just about people dealing with um, folks with mental illness, but like one thing that uh, is so hard, especially if you've been with someone since you were very young, is figuring out how to not be codependent emotionally. Mm -hmm. um, I, when I was in high yeah. school, I dated someone for a long, like since we were in high school through college. And um, I, it is shocking to me when I look back and think about what a different person I was and the things that I, the behaviors that I allowed, the things that I did. Um, and I can look back on it and see like I was emotionally codependent. Like when this person felt bad, I thought I felt bad. And I think that's something that is still hard for me. I mean, like my girlfriend is the sweetest, most wonderful person in the world, but like I still have the experience that when she's in a bad mood, I have to remind myself, like, just because she's upset about something that's going on with her doesn't mean that I automatically have to feel upset, but the mm -hmm. instinct is there. Like it is a very, I mean, it's just a very human and pathetic uh, uh, impulse, but also it, it really is codependency to be like the people around me's feelings set my own feelings. And it's so difficult, but I think one of the things that I wish I had learned earlier, like when I was in my teens and twenties is how to check in with yourself about how you're feeling before you encounter another person's emotions and then feel solid in that so that you can see the moment when, when their mood rubs off on you. So mm -hmm. like, it's oh, really hard sometimes. Great advice. People, well, I think it's, I, I mean, I'm someone who I'm a super internal processor and I spend a ton of time yes, alone, like even before COVID. <laughs> Yeah, I work from home. I, you know, I, I do all these things. I'm a writer. So I'm just like hanging out with myself all day long. And so it's really hard sometimes to even know how I feel until I like go outside and encounter other people. And then suddenly I'm like, oh, I'm in a really shitty mood because the first person I saw like looked at me wrong. And I, now I want to go on a murder spree <laughs> or I walk outside and the first totally person. Totally normal. 
But the first person I see is like a friend I haven't seen in a while and, and they're so happy. And then I'm like, oh my God, I'm in a great mood. And it's almost like my, I don't register. It's not that I didn't have a mood before I went outside. It's that I wasn't confronted by anything that brought my mood to the surface. So I was just feeling neutral. Mm-hmm. And now before I leave the house, I check in with my, I sound so woo woo, but like, I mean, it's <laughs> unconscious at this point, but you have to make it conscious first. Like I check in with myself and I'm like, where am I scale of one to 10? How am I feeling? And it feels really silly at first, but it is super helpful to realize like, I'm in a really good mood. I finished my work for the day. The cat sat on my lap in just the right way. My coffee was extra good and I feel good. And then if you go to some, so like you're hanging out with someone and they, the first thing out of their mouth is like, I'm so fucking pissed at my person because of X, Y, or Z, my publisher's screwing me over my this and that. And suddenly you're like, oh man, the world is shit. Everything sucks. (laughs) That is you changing your mood to fit with the mood of the person who's speaking to you. And that, that is just basic empathy, but that is also emotional codependence and what you should be able to do. And I hate using like prescriptive language, but what you should be able to do is still be in a good mood and still feel in a good mood and have empathy for what that person is going through. That does Mm -hmm. not change your mood. And I know that probably some people listening right now are like, that's called being a robot or that's called being selfish because we are steeped in like this culture of codependence. That's like, that tells you, you should do that. But actually there's a whole song about it. I feel glad when you're glad. I feel sad when you're sad, (laughs) whatever. I mean, like, yeah. Yeah. That gets romanticized as like (laughs) Mm -hmm. the height of, but like, if you're in feeling with someone, then the two of you are compatible, but usually that is the emotional equivalent to like having your, uh, your period pulled to be on the schedule of whoever is like, the, the most <laughs> hormonal person in your area, you know, like everyone gets on that person. Whoever cycle. has the strongest estrogen. Whoever See, has the strongest. And whatever I, and I it have, is. I have four sisters, so my period was always dependent on you the always. four of them. So, I mean, just rough. I rough think that times. just means that you're well-versed in buying chocolate and not asking questions. Oh, God, I wish. Backing away. Oh, I Backing wish. away. I wish having four sisters and then living with my mother and my grandmother had given me some sort of insight into being a better husband and partner. Um, but I am just the worst person. So <laughs> maybe it's just, no, no. I, and it's, I wrote on really like, He's yeah, lying. right. Yeah, we know. No, no, bro, right. <laughs> Wait, I know. Wait. No, my, my wife and I have been together uh, 10 years married this May. Um, and we've been together for 12, uh, two kids. And, you know, it's, it's super important to have that separation between the two because, you know, she does have bouts of anxiety and, and, and depression, not so much the depression, the anxiety can sometimes be crippling. And especially during COVID, like that's, that was tough. That was tough to manage Mm -hmm. because I was used to what, you know, how things would affect her prior to that. And then once we hit COVID, I mean, like I had said earlier, like I still work a full-time job during the day where I'm out and about and around people. And I want to say early March going into April, when it was like, Hey, these next two weeks are critical and the infection rate is going to skyrocket. If we can't, um, you know, uh, try to try to hedge this off. I ended up having to take FMLA because my job was like, no, you have to be out and about. And I was like, fuck, no, I don't. (laughs) I just had, I just had a kid in October before, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, going into the pandemic. So I was like, no, I'm going to take some FMLA. I still have time available. I'm going to do that. And that was not putting my family at risk, but it's hard when you don't have that option mm-hmm. available. Right. And you, you know, Roan, you were kind of speaking to trying to find that, that balance, right. Between being there for the other person, being empathetic to what they're going through, but also knowing for yourself, like, I don't feel those things. So I will never fully understand exactly what they're going through because that's not how I operate but how I operate still needs to be supportive of what they are, but I can't let their mood completely determine what my mood is. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I'm fortunate enough that I am very loud mouth and very self-assured that I know how I feel and who I am when I wake up in the morning, but I also know how my mood can affect those that are around me, whether it's my wife, whether it's my children, Mm -hmm. whether I'm hopping on a call with Tim and how that's going to affect him. And and I'm always going to be in a bad mood. When oh, I have fucking always I get, get on the phone with him, it's bad mood for me. We, when it's yeah, text, it's just like, the worst. When 20 years of bad mood, yes. Oh, yeah. when it's, <laughs> text messages are bad enough, and now we send voice messages back and forth. Uh, and I've got to, I'm like, I got to hear this fucking voice too. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> it's just the 
but when does it when does it end? oh the love just basking in the love here. right right I've broken my phone so many times just knowing he was going to send me a voice message yeah he wait yeah. he wakes up in the morning he goes no 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 see he's fortunate because he's on the east coast so he has like a three hour respite of not mm-hmm. having to deal with me until i wake up and i'm like hey fuck face and he's like oh here it goes my day yep. has gone to shit so yeah. there you go but it's but the it's, end of the line right but I, I it's great i think it's it's cool because we've had like five not conflicting but like varied opinions on ways that you can approach this and you know you know letter writer you can kind of pick and choose like what makes the most sense for you and what you think is going to mm-hmm. be the best way to to be supportive and find a way through for you and for your partner just just i'll yeah. give you i'll give you the best advice of this whole thing just ignore whatever liam and i said <laughs> fuck yeah <laughs> no no you guys are great <laughs> unless i will was, say I unless it was really butter good. in the ass that's the yeah. one that you take you <laughs> that's take the best that advice, one right? yeah don't do that you take no, that i will home. say that at 22 um it's incredible incredibly incredibly impressive that you wrote this letter because mm-hmm. yeah this there is are so many people mature. at 22 32 62 whatever that would not have written this letter so thank you for that thank you for trusting us a little bit to absolutely give you something and to- i would i just want to sneak in just one last time with saying you know hey you can be supportive without being the sole support yeah and that's really important too is is to remember that that you can create that boundary without stopping being supportive of somebody you obviously care deeply about and be supportive by also keep taking care of yourself like they always say on the plane like put your your oxygen mask on first and then help the person so yeah yeah and because this letter writer says that she has also been dealing with depression and anxiety recently that's at a lower level i i really hope letter writer that you are um carving out some time to deal Mm -hmm. with your own Yep. symptoms and that you are talking to a therapist and all of that stuff because just because your mental health ha- like issues happen to be lower volume than the person you spend the most time with of yep. course that comparison could make it feel like yours aren't as important but mm-hmm. that's just in comparison with the person you happen to be spending time with like in right. comparison to where you want to be you are still having these issues and I hope that you will respect those and not feel like just because they're not as immediate that you don't deserve help as much as your partner does mm-hmm. absolutely yeah um okay in in other happy news <laughs> um we so we asked listeners to enter a giveaway because we did it was like our one year anniversary and we asked people what is the best advice you received and I chose at random, like I used a number randomizer. So it's not like I chose what I thought was the best advice, but I was very excited to see that the advice, the, the advice that this person gave, the winner gave fits really well with our letter today. So oh, okay, like our winner is Adriana Gonzalez. Congratulations. Yay, congratulations. And thank you so much for listening, Adriana. And what Adriana is winning is a little swag pack or big swag pack actually of uh, signed books from me and Avery and Zio, and also our brand new shiny uh, Dear Romance Writer swag. But okay, so here is the advice from the, the, the best advice Adriana's ever been given. She says, it's worked in every relationship in my life, not just romance. Uh, not only are people not mind readers, but everyone's experiences will make them see things completely differently from you. So don't assume you know what they're thinking or saying until you talk to them. Communication is key talk to people. You might think you know what the other person's thinking or how they're going to react to some news, but the highest chance is that you don't know. It mm-hmm. seems so obvious, but it's very hard to follow most of the time. Thanks for listening oh my to God. my advice. Nice. Especially yeah. when what they think is wrong. That's the uh, worst part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Totally. But I feel like yeah. that's really relevant to what we've all been saying is that is like mm-hmm. one of the most important modes of communication is starting off with understanding that you can't read that person's mind. They can't read yours you don't know exactly how they're feeling. They don't know exactly how you're feeling. And that's why you have to sit down and be like, hey, you may or may not know how I'm feeling. Here it is. What about you? And that that would be a great way to start off a conversation about this if you want to is like, oh my God, dude, you have depression, anxiety. I have depression and anxiety. How the fuck are you feeling about this? Here's how I'm feeling. Let's talk about it. And like that, that you you include, it's inclusive, it's collaborative. Uh, so I feel like the, the best advice that Adriana Gonzalez has received is also the advice that we would give you, which is like, don't assume, yeah. ask and tell. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know what they say about making an assumption makes an ass out of you and mm-hmm. so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
I've heard that. I've heard that. From me. With You've or heard without it from butter. Me. Yeah. Yes, with or without butter. And yeah. for those that are vegan, like Tim, there are, you know, non yeah. non dairy balance. alternatives that you can Earth utilize. Earth balance is lube. It's great lube. Yeah, Earth balance. I think I can't believe it's not butter. I think that's also vegan, which is I don't think so. I think it is. No. Uh, whatever. Oh. It's still probably great lube. <laughs> Really, at this point, anything yeah. can be great lube. I, uh, All of your advice needs are being met this week. I love this it. This is true. This is this true. This is very true. Well, Tim and Leanne, we loved having you guys here with us today. Thank you so much for coming. Um, tell us one more time where we can find you guys, where we can find the podcast, all of the good things. Give it. Yeah, you can find our podcast at thelovegods.lol. That's our website. Or at the love gods lol on the different socials and uh you can find my work anywhere you get your audiobooks nice and same for me uh you can also follow me on social media at liam de cosimo i do apologize it's not the easiest one to spell but d-i-c-o-s-i-m-o so liam de cosimo uh or you can just tune into the love gods and listen to tim and i give absolutely earth shattering terrible advice and <laughs> Hopefully you ignore all of it and live a happier life because of it. Yes, please. Before you guys go, I wanted to know, I know you both do a lot of audio books, but when you're called upon to do accents, whether they be oh, yeah. domestic or international, what's your favorite voice to do? Ooh. So, I mean, I love the, I love being able to put on an Irish accent and I haven't been able to use it in a, in a ton of books, but I've actually found more recently, I've really enjoyed doing like a Southern accent. And uh, <laughs> I kind of accidentally fell into what is sort of like a East Texas, West Louisiana accent, like almost more of like that, um, like Bayou accent, like sample so sample. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so I had to do the, I, I did this book for only James where it was uh, bodyguards falling in love with the the person that they're guarding and usually it's like an age gap male male romance and one of the guys is sort of supposed to be like this east texas you know west louisiana not really described but they just it's, she attributes that he's southern so i went with like the deep voice so you know it's more of this voice real deep in the bayou so you know i'm, I'm just trying to protect this love interest and i, I thoroughly enjoy the softness of his skin and how tightly he wraps himself around my chiseled hard abs and the, <laughs> the sweat that glistens down my back. So that's kind of and, been and like his partner's name is actually love interest. That's the actual, that's the character's name. Yeah, pretty much. So it's like, first you know, name. First like name. this guy's name is Tex and this other guy's name is love interest. So, you know, it's, it's, it's very, very exciting, but that's been, that's been one that I've enjoyed a little bit more, uh, frequently so i try to insert that one into books and then i'll usually get the note that like this character is not southern <laughs> <laughs> this character is from boston yes Science yes calculation yeah. yeah this character is british well fuck me <laughs> <laughs> or sorry i should say oh well fuck me yeah exactly slightly different. My, my favorite is to do my favorite accent is general american i'm really good at that one <laughs> <laughs> it's so difficult to do it's really hard. It's really, it's really hard. Uh, yeah. He's actually pretty fucking terrible. I don't know if you've noticed throughout this entire podcast, but he's putting on those absolutely the worst accent that I've probably ever heard in my entire life. Yeah. I, I wish that he had gone to some sort of formal schooling to teach him how to do a fucking bit of an accent. But we'll stumble through this regardless, and hopefully your listeners won't call us out too bad. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> And you would think with both of us being originally from New York, like one of us could do a passable New York accent. And we fucking can't. Nope. We can't. Even New Yorkers so sound like they're faking New York accents. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. They are. They just well, put it on. We're not 1940s gangsters. We can't. We don't actually fucking talk like that. But as soon as you put a camera in our face, we're like, oh, yeah, the, the fucking Jets, man. They're great. Like, oh, it's, yeah. Oh, fucking no, wait, awesome. There's, there's a show. So I'm, I'm obsessed with dating shows completely upset it's it's a problem i watch way too many dating shows but there's this one called are you the one it was on mtv and uh on the first season there's one character that's from new york i say character because there's it's supposed to be reality tv but <laughs> yeah. he is such a new york character if you <laughs> just if you ever want to watch somebody who's like oh that that person is probably not from new york and is playing a role it's that dude and you'll know exactly who i'm talking about if you ever if you ever watch it, it's bad. I love 
there's a guy on YouTube. I mean, I'm sure he's like has a life outside of YouTube, but he's a, <laughs> he's either he's no, like he's a, trapped a, in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's like a, a dialect expert. I think he teaches somewhere. Yeah, but he, yeah. Have you seen the video where he yes, goes I, through every? Oh my goodness, oh he my does God. every accent from like Canada, I think, all the way down, all, down, all through yeah. the states. Oh well, my he, goodness! He, if it's the one I'm thinking of, he he like will lay into actors, like professional actors, and it's like they Does should he? have, yeah, like they should have hired an acting coach because this is <laughs> terrible. Like he he holds <laughs> nothing back when he's picking apart accents. That's why I think for us as narrators, like we have to be pretty honest yeah. with with yeah. authors. Oh yeah, we don't want to put ourselves in a situation where like we attempt an accent that just comes out disingenuous. Yeah. Um, I had from only James uh she did a uh, a series with Nev Wilder where one of the characters was supposed to be like Middle East like Israeli slash Pakistani mm -hmm. and I was just like look I there's no way <laughs> like I'll do the I'll do the book but can we do like a general American accent or like maybe just like a more clipped pronunciation so it's a more just not mm -hmm. RP but proper like in the in the way that they're delivered and they were like yeah that's fine 100% go ahead with that. And mm -hmm. the end result, in my opinion, <laughs> the end result was far better than if I tried to imitate, you know, like Gal Gadot, like it was just not going to work. Yeah. Well, and now, that's I had, I had really a, interesting. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Tim. I was going to say, I ha actually had a narrator who I wanted to do a particular book where the, it was a Glaswegian accent. And he was like, I would, he's like the entire book. And I was like, yeah, he's like, I would love to, but I'm not going to pretend that I could hold that for the entire book. There was no way. And I was like, well, I appreciate your honesty. We'll yeah. work on something yeah. else. But yeah like thank you for that because that's a huge thing well yeah. okay and i'm not going to call out the author on this this is a non-fiction book so it's none of no nobody, <laughs> nobody that we know. is in is in our specific com romance community but i love this author's books like nobody's business i was so excited about the latest book that came out i you know i i don't read the blurbs i just buy the book because i love this author so much and um, it was one of those where I had a lot of Audible credits left. So I'm like, I'll get it on both. And then I could just swap back and forth, which I actually love doing. And um, bless her, <laughs> her narration was so bad. Oh, and no. she's talking to people like in, in her book, she, they're always like, there are interviews in there and all that stuff. So she's trying to do as a normal human, not that y'all aren't normal, but there you, you got some special things barely. about you. We're barely but, skill set. Yeah, you got a <laughs> skill set. But so she's trying to do different voices for each of the people that she's interviewing. And what made me think of it is one of the guys that she interviewed was, um, I don't remember which provenance in India, but he, and it was... Mm -hmm so stereotypical and yeah. so incredibly bad that I, I had to like I couldn't just not listen to the audiobook like I still haven't read the book oh, and I'm wow. like and that's so unusual but it was just really I'm like and it it very much made me appreciate because there are some people that can do their own books and oh, yeah. in the nonfiction world right and and I think it makes a lot of sense and it comes through really well. Um, like, okay, I am reading and listening to Allow Me to Retort right now, right? And he he, he actually does his own narration and um, he talks super fast though. So like, I am gonna actually have to slow him down, but <laughs> it's, you know, it, it fits in, it, it works in all the ways, but that is a skill set to be able to narrate a book. It is a huge skill set, and I don't think people realize that. Mm -hmm. True. I recently signed up for TikTok, much to the chagrin oh. of myself and everyone around me. But there was some, you know, how, like there's the random people that they'll be like, they'll give advice, like you know, uh, side hustle part five or whatever. Mm -hmm. This guy's like, side hustle, go to acx.com, click on this. You can get four hundred dollars by reading this children's book. And I was like, for fuck's sake, no, you can't. Like you just bypassed a thousand steps to fucking do this. And you basically marginalized an entire profession. Like I, I wanted to like comment back to it, but I just don't care enough. You're like, am I going to, do I have the energy to start that fight today? <laughs> really, really. And I'm like, and is, is this going to be my first TikTok is like bitching about my profession? Like maybe, maybe I save that one for side me. hustle, maybe become a best selling author. Yeah. yeah oh, oh yeah. He, yeah. He preface yeah. it with like, can you read? <laughs> Can you, like, can you read? Can you speak English? Like, then you can you make $400. Write. 
Yes. Yeah, can you breathe? Are you alive? Like, <laughs> are you alive? You've got this. Like, Just send me ninety-seven dollars for my course on yeah, how. To do like it. pretty much, it's yeah. like me. Can you read a? Can you read a book? Can you speak English? You can become a NASA scientist with this quick, easy step. So <laughs> make sure you click that subscribe button. Have you ever looked at the night sky? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, know you pick out the sun. In? Well, Liam and Tim, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us yes. as uh, here at the Dear Love Romance Gods. Writer. And yes. make sure and go check out the Love Gods and, thank you, and we're uh, sorry. send in your questions to us first. Yes. And <laughs> then, you know, eventually send them into them too. We'll, Set the we'll ones share. If you we want, want the real, yeah. yeah, if you yeah. want real <laughs> advice, send it to them. If you want to know about the Great American Challenge, send it to us. Mm -hmm. the there you of go. Butter. See? It's, yeah, it's the, the little things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so send those in advice at dearromance.com or you can send it with our anonymous form or social medias, all that other good stuff. Please send them in because we cannot wait to give you some questionable advice from a trio of happily ever after enthusiasts. Thank you guys so much and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. 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 Cheers. Thank you so much for subscribing to Dear Romance Writer. Remember to keep sending in those letters at dearromancewriter.com. We can't wait to tell you what to do. Dear Romance Writer is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts you'll love, frolic.media slash podcasts.